everyone. Welcome back to the Book Vandal Shop. In this video and in the next, I'll be making two embellished envelopes um, that I'm going to put in an Edith Holden journal that I've been working on. I'm using a large 10 by 13 manila mailing envelope to create the two smaller ones. Um, this particular envelope that you'll see, it has been jelly printed. Um, I got it from Lisa from Sirius Hecka. She sent it to me. Um, I'll put her channel link in the description box below, but I'll be using that. She she um, jelly printed on it, uh, and I think she used it to clean off her brayer, but it made some nifty art, so I'm going to put it to good use. So the first thing I'm going to end up doing um, is cutting off the one of the short sides and then one of the long sides. And then I will be cutting it in half. Like they'll, um, I'm cutting it in half from the, there'll be the top portion and the bottom portion. And what's that, what that's going to do is give me two folded edges that are different. Um, cause I'm going to make a tall, skinnier envelope and then a shorter, longer envelope in the next video. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold that down just a little bit farther. Sorry, it cut it, cut it off. Um, I'm creating a flap for my envelope here. So I do apologize for the way I'm doing today's video. Um, <laughs> things just didn't happen the way I wanted them to. And um, so I'm trying to salvage this. <laughs> I, I didn't even get it filmed in a regular 16 by nine format. It's for some reason square. I don't know. I think I was having a very off, off day when I was doing this. So I'm just cleaning up my edges there, making sure they're nice and straight. And then now I'm going to just use a roll of washi tape to um, round my corners there. Um, I could use a corner rounder, but it didn't give me quite as, as large of a, a curve that I was looking for for my flaps there. So yeah, again, I apologize for the square format of the video and then having to do a voiceover. I get not my favorite way to do things. Um, so I'll try to get my act together for the for the next ones. Uh, then the next video after this one's going to be a little, little different too. Um, cause I filmed them together. So <laughs> just, you know, bear with me. It's dawn. What do you expect? I fly by the seat of my pants all the time. So I love the jelly printing though, that Lisa did on these envelopes and it, it works out perfectly to go with these Edith Holden prints, um, or from the journal, the Edith Holden pages from the journal. So I'm just kind of uh, finding my middle there, cut a thumb notch in. It makes it easier to get things in and out of the envelope. I also cut that down from the top there, you see. And I saved that scrap of paper that I cut off because I'm going to use it later for embellishing. Ink up my edges, of course, because it's Edith Holden and grungy edges go perfectly. <laughs> And then now let's do some embellishing on the flap for the envelope. I'm picking out one of her pages from the book that have just some text. Um, and instead of using my paper cutter to cut it all, um, I'm going with just tearing with a ruler.
and sew down the two sides to close up our envelope. I could use glue, but stitching, I think, um, just adds a better effect. For some reason, even though I, I choose that setting, this machine's not doing it. I need to have my husband take a look at it. He's good with sewing machines and fixing timing issues and all that, and I'm sure that's what needs done. So, All right, so I'm using another one of her book pages. Uh, this one's got a chunk cut out of the top of it for some reason. I think I might have used it somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what was on the back side, but I'm just putting it to use. And it's, I mean, it's a cute page. All of her pages are pretty. Um, but it's not one I think I would normally use for something else, so it works perfectly to put it on the back of this envelope. bottom and the top or tear the bottom and the top and then we'll put a thumb notch in it so but like I mentioned earlier in the video I'm working on an Edith Holden journal Edith Holden um, if you don't know she kept a diary um, it's called the country diary of an Edwardian lady um, let's see if I've got it handy here next to me while we're doing that so I'm just sewing down the edges and the bottom of my pocket there just to make it look pretty it has no function there at all just to make it look like my pocket was sewn on when it wasn't um trying to see i don't see if i have a title page for her book handy right now in front of me i'm thinking it was like 1903 or something like that um but anyway you guys you most of you should know uh, oh that was a perfect way to use up that page for that pocket because i had the snake on the back page i don't think i'll ever put that in a journal but Anyway, I think most of you know Edith Holden. If not, you can Google it online. But she, she kept a diary, a nature diary, um, and her illustrations and her handwriting were beautiful. The journal pages are an actual like facsimile from her original um, diary that she kept. So, And here I'm just using off that, that um, piece of scrap that I cut off earlier that I set aside so I don't want to I don't want to throw away any usable part of that gorgeous paper so you can't see the texture in the video but uh, all the layers of paint and other materials that she had uh, on her jelly plate uh, made for some really awesome texture <music> ink and instead of using my my dabber my dauber or whatever you call that thing uh, my sponge I'm just putting a little bit on my finger 
and then now I'm just going to ink up the edges there that I missed a little bit of. But I put the ink on my finger and then just kind of rubbed it on and, and it, it muted it down just a little bit, but it didn't give me any hard crisp edges like using my, my sponge would have. Um, and then here's just, it's a half sheet of, of one of her pages that I had left. I'm trying to make sure I use every usable part of those book pages. Those books are very expensive now. I'm lucky to have purchased a whole bunch of them. Um, back when you could grab them for five, six, seven, eight dollars a piece, I I have I grabbed like I don't know twelve or something like that, and I thought, you know, oh, one of these days I'll use them all up. Well, now I'm starting to hoard them a little bit more because last I last I had looked online, and it's been a while. Um, I'm thinking they were going for like thirty dollars a piece or something crazy like that. So supply and demand, I guess. Um, so I cringe to think back when I was using these books up like crazy when I was buying them for five dollars a pop. I hopefully I didn't throw away very much. I don't think I did, because um, I did have a, a huge envelope full of paper scraps. Um, that's what I used to make those collage cards. Uh, I did a video of those or a YouTube short of those not too long ago. So I'm just kind of giving this some layering effect though. I think that was a sheet of scrapbooking paper there. Um, I just want to add a little bit of color pop. I'm just tearing out around the violet flower there um, because I'm going to end up putting a violet flower on the flap and that'll just tie the colors together. It didn't quite give me the pop that I wanted when I laid that down so I am going to end up putting that whole thing back onto some cream colored paper so oh there's where my title page went for my book <laughs> the one I was looking for a minute ago I think I used it from the paper studio they are a really really thin um, flower not sure what they're made of I think they're made of paper if they are it's like a tissue paper let me grab them here real quick and look while I'm gluing that on just says floral embellishment I think they're paper tissue paper I don't know but they're really thin I, I like that the greenery that came with them. It's very wispy. It's, it it almost feels like um, I don't know. The the greenery feels weird. It's it's got a texture like a almost like a fabric. So I'm just cutting that one down just a little bit. But I'm going to hang on to that greenery piece and use it. I believe in the next envelope that I do in the next video. I don't want to throw any part of that away. Those flowers are kind of expensive, and. Uh, I, don't, I want to put all of it to good use. So I'm just using glue on my fingers to do this. If I had turned that over and hit it with a glue bottle, I think I would have got it way too heavy handed. So um, as wispy as, as that greenery stuff was, I think it was just easier putting it on with my finger. And there we go. How cute is that? So add a little bit of trim here. That is also some Hobby Lobby trim, I know have scads of it. I've had bought it. I used to buy a roll of it every time it was on sale because right? I used so much of it. And I'm just lightly dabbing each little piece. There we go. Simple but yet effective. 
So it, it just really makes the purple or the violet color pop in that uh, paper that she sent. So. And now on the back, we need to put a tag in. So I'm just using a piece of cardstock that I already had in my stash. cover um, one side of the tag with some brown paper. Um, it was a really, really thin scrapbooking paper um, that I cut and ran through my embosser. So it's really thin paper, so it's not very usable. Um, yeah, it's only really usable if I glue it to something. So just add a little texture to my tag there. Go ahead and trim around the edges. And we're going to go ahead and just clean that up just a little bit and then we'll ink around the edges. Uh, that paper had a, a white backside to it so a little bit of it shows. We'll go ahead and ink that up and then where I embossed or uh, ran it through the embosser um, it almost because it's so thin it almost punched right through it so just kind of ink up that little bit there. All right so I'm going to bring in some pieces of, of the book page that, that I had left over. Just go ahead and mark them to fit. Just a good way to use up those scraps. I'm just wanting to put kind of a little layered effect on there. So we'll put some greenery at the bottom. I love that little tiny paper trimmer. My mom gave me that for Christmas and <laughs> that has been the best crafting tool I think I've ever had. So, I mean, I love my big paper trimmer, don't get me wrong, but that little one is indispensable for just cutting small stuff. All right, go ahead and glue that down. And then I had a um, quote, or not a quote, a definition had something about flowers or floral or something. Let me bring it over here. Uh, oh, blossom. It was a dictionary definition of the word blossom. Um, and I cannot remember where I got those from. It was a whole sheet of, of definitions and um, I can't remember if there was quotes or if they were just dictionary definitions of botanical and gardening themed uh, words. I I think I might have got them from Musings from Nikki. I don't really remember. If I if I think about it, if I remember where I got those from, um, I'll put them and put the link form in the description box below. But those have been pretty indispensable for just adding little elements. So it's just a simple butterfly uh, rubber stamp. Just to add just a little bit there on the back side, but I don't want to put much on the back. I want to be able to use it for journaling. And then that's just a page scrap that, that I had, and I'm just going to cut it into a strip and glue it on just to make a little simple pull for the tag. Nothing fancy. I, I could have put a ribbon, you know, punched a hole and put a ribbon or a, a twine in there, but I didn't really want to add a lot of bulk. Um, this journal that I'm making is already getting pretty chunky, um, and it's going to be a big one anyway. Um, so I didn't want to add too much bulk. The envelope itself is a little bulky and the flower on it. So, And then now let's go ahead and put something inside of our envelope. And I've just chosen a piece of coffee dyed paper that I've folded into thirds. Um, I could have made a card or another tag to go inside there. But I think, you know, it's a journal. So we want pages to write on. So that's just some, some page scraps there. I've just torn into strips. Put some glue on it and uh, I've inked up the edges. Just gonna put that right down the edge there. And then just for fun, 
Let's go ahead and run that through the sewing machine. It just, you know, it, it takes a sheet of coffee dyed paper that you're going to write on and, and fancies it up a little bit, you know. I mean, it's fun to have pretty things to write on. So there'll be plenty of plain sheets of, of paper in the journal to write on, but sometimes it's just fun to have something pretty to, to journal on. And then now to tie in with the butterfly that I put on the tag that's in the back of the journal, I'm going to go ahead and stamp another butterfly on some scrap paper. And we're going to use that as the element for our um, journaling paper. Just go ahead and tear around the edges. And we'll ink up the edges and glue it on, and that will finish up our journaling page. Just simple, simple elements. See? Isn't that going to be cute? I can't wait to show all of you guys the, this journal when I get it done. I just love doing Edith Holden projects. I haven't done one for a long time. I forgot how much I enjoy working with her book pages or her diary pages. And that's that. So put the tag back in, put the paper in the envelope, and that will wrap it up. So I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to make the second envelope in the next video. Take care, guys. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.